Okay, this whole idea of similar figures is not in the concept. I know you did this in middle school, but the idea is you've got to be able to, to say how you know it's similar. And then today we're going to talk about oh, our favorite shape. Yeah, right? you got to get you triangles. Now we're going to talk about similar triangles and how can we prove that two triangles are similar uh, or justify that two triangles are similar. And here's, here's what it says. Postulate 7.1. Who remembers what the difference between a postulate and a theorem is? Every theorem we learn has a proof with it. What about a postulate? Do postulates have proof? Postulates are accepted without proof, meaning that it makes sense. So look what this says. If two triangles, mm -hmm. if two angles in one triangle are congruent to two angles in another triangle, then that's enough information to say they're similar. Does that make sense? Do you agree with that without a proof? Do you believe it? Haley, you need to get your, your attitude out of the, the negative side of life right now. Uh, you're, you're, you're grumpy. You don't need to be grumpy. We have a theorem. What do we know about if two angles of one triangle are congruent to two triangles and other two angles and other ones? Do we have a do you remember the third angles theorem? What does it say? If we know this angle is going to this angle and this angle is going to this angle, then this has to be congruent. Because uh, they have to add up to 180. And so the fact that we only need two angles to prove angles are congruent, that's enough information. So today, when they ask you to prove or justify how you know things are similar, if you know two angles in one triangle are congruent to two angles in another triangle, you can say they're similar by angle-angle. Okay? Oh, how about this? Determine whether the triangles are similar. If so, write a similarity statement. statement. Explain your reasoning. You know what's great about the, the wording explain your reasoning or justify? It's almost like I'm making you do a proof without telling you you're doing a proof. So, Hunter, what about number one? Those angles don't look like two angles are the same, so am I going to say no? Oh, I know. D and B are the same. I agree with that. This is 42. Whatever. I don't know. I didn't follow you. Explain more. Do we trust a picture, Hunter Crone? Oh, Moving on. So E and A are the same. How could you show me without saying they look the same? Because how could I find out what angle A is? Because what, what am I going to subtract from? What do I know the angles in the triangle add up? 180. 180. And if I add these up and subtract 180, guess what this equals? 180. I told you. Yeah, what are you Isn't that true? That's a lie. That's a lie. Which means I can say angle A is congruent to angle E, which means, if I do the math here, is this one going to be 58 over here? Someone, uh, someone in the other class said instead of subtracting from 180, they just added the three angles up that they gave me, like 42 to 58 and 80, and they saw that added up to 180, so they knew that it had to work. Uh, but yes, we can say yes, they are similar um, by the angle angle similarity. I don't know. I'm okay if you just say AA. Really, it's a, a similarity. If you say that. And then you have to say the similarity statement. It doesn't matter which letters you start with in one triangle as long as they match up. So if I say triangle ABC, what do we have to say for the other one? I got this. Because 80, 42, 58. You have to go in the same order. 80, 42, 60. If you do not go in the same order, that is wrong. No, it's not congruent. It's, it's similar. What about number two? They don't give me any angles. It must be no. Do you know any angles that are congruent by looking at this? Yeah. Oh, someone said the X. How do I know these are vertical? Vertical angles, right? 
And these triangles tell me that these lines are parallel. Whenever they give me parallel lines and triangles, what do I always end up using? The transversal can I do here, right? So what is this angle with this angle make? Because they're what kind of angles? Alternate. And I don't really have to prove the other ones. I only need two. So would these also be over anterior angles? Yeah, so we could say, yes, I'm going to give a little more answer on this one. Using alternate interior angles and vertical angles. Triangle, I'm going to mix it up on this time. MXN is similar to so again, mark this other you need to. M doesn't have a mark on it. X is in the middle. And then N is the one that's marked two. So in the same order, you have to start with no mark, one mark, two marks. So PXQ. Or as long as the, the letters match up, I have to mark that. Right. Okay? So far, so good. Yes? Guess what? There's more ways to prove that triangles are similar. So we got angle angle, and we got two more ways. I don't even make you fill anything in here, right? I just want you to know. Um, just like you can use the angles to prove they're similar, you also can use just the size. If you don't know any angles, but it's a corresponding size of two lengths of the triangles are proportional, then the triangles are similar. So if you know that all the sides are proportional, then you don't have to know anything about the angles to know that they're, they're similar by side, side, side. And then the other one, remember good old side angle side from proving triangles are congruent? We can do the same thing for similar. Uh, we prove one angle is congruent, and then the other two sides are just proportional, right? So not the same measures, but they just have that same scale factor. So today, how do I know things are similar? You're going to use angle angle, side side side, or side angle side. No angle side side. What's wrong? <laughs> Look at number three. Determine if the triangles are similar. If so, write a similarity statement. Judge by your reasoning. Look at number three. Could we, if we want to use the side, 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 or side, angle, side, we have to prove that the sides are proportional, right? So you have to match up the sides that go together. Which side goes with AB? So that's 9 over 6. That was easy. What about a C? Yes. Right. So this is, people struggle with this. How do you know which ones go together? Remember that the, the bigger the side, the bigger the angle, right? So look at six. Is six the smallest side, the middle side, or the biggest side of that time? <laughs> oh, it is the smallest side. I was like, what? Um, it is the smallest, which means that it has to go with the smallest side of the other side. So so it has to go with CD, which is 4, right? Sometimes it's hard to tell which one it goes with. So use the fact that the shortest sides are going to go together, the middle sides are going to go together. Okay, so that was kind of, they're really close together in length, so it's kind of hard to tell. But it, it's basically like this one, you turned it up, then you could turn this one up. That would be over. Um, no, it didn't show. It just moved the face. <laughs> Uh, are those the same ratio? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Three over two, right? So we just got to do the last one. Um, 7.5 over 5. That one I would do not. Uh, so I'm going to put it all equals 3 over 2, or it all equals 1.5. So when it says justify the reasoning, if you show me that you check all the sides and they're all the same, you don't have to it, right? So I'm going to 
say yes, bye. What did I use to prove this? Pay attention. Side, side, side. Oh, wait, I didn't write it from where it is. ABC. Like, mark the ones that you know go together so you can follow the same path. Okay, what about number four? Do you see two triangles in number four? Oh, see, this one tricks people, right? So, definitely, this is one triangle, right? But then what's left looks like a trapezoid. Oh, it's the big one. So, if it helps you, separate this, right? Like, you can pull this out. Oh, that's interesting. And you can say, in... M P, which would be 10, 12, and I don't know the bottom side. And then you got the big triangle. Which would be R M S. And what would the length of R M be? Right, like it's the whole thing there, which is 25, and then this side would be 30. Right? I'm not a very visual person. Uh, like, it's hard for me to kind of look at both of them one inside the other. So it always helps me to break it up. If you can see both of them and you don't need to break it up, you don't need to do that. On this one, they only give me two of the three sides, which means I can't use side, side, side. I'm going to have to use side, angle, side if it works. Um, how do I know that this angle is congruent to this angle? It's the same angle, right? It's one triangle inside another triangle. So angle M is congruent to itself. Angle M is congruent to angle M. By what property is that again? Reflexive property. And then I just got to check the two sides. Um, 10 over 25, is that the same ratio as 12 over 30? 5, this would be 2 fifths. And divide by six would be two fifths. And again, I'm okay with that. That's your work, so I can say yes by side angle side. We're trying to prove that the angle in between the two sides is congruent. So when you're using side angle side, you're proving the sides are proportional and the angle in between them is the same. So you have to prove that it's angle M. Like if you proved angle P, that's not side angle side. That's angle side side, and that's supposed to be that Yes? No? Oh look, oh, I want you to open your book. Who brought the book today? You can look off Hunter. You can save here. Um, <laughs> theorem 7.5 in your book, which is, this is lesson 7-3, so you find the page number. There's a lovely table that looks just like this, and it just tells you that the properties that we know, reflexive, symmetric, and transitive, still work in similarity. Okay. 474. 477, I mean. This table, you got to find the table. <laughs> you found the lesson, and she found the paper. Group work. She, she got I'm just 
And then our good old transit of property. It just says that these are true for similarity statements as well. triangles are similar, you're supposed to determine first if they're similar before you can start solving the problem. Um, so looking at this before we start labeling everything and setting up our proportion, um, again, kind of like the first one we did with the triangles, if they give me the, the two lines are parallel, can I always use alternate um, interior angles to prove that those two angles are congruent to each other? And you can even do vertical angles to prove that all three angles are congruent. Um, which means they don't tell me that these triangles are similar, but because I know they're similar, then I can set up the proportion. And sometimes your homework might say, determine if they're similar first and then solve the problem. So just be aware of that. Sometimes they might give you ones that aren't similar to try to trick you, and, and you might assume things that aren't true. Uh, but once you know that they're similar, um, we can set up the ratio here because 10 goes with which side? Right? So that's my scale factor here, 10 over 4. What am I going to set that equal to? <laughs> 2 x plus 10. <laughs> and that's going to go with this side, which is x plus 3. It's actually some good uh, algebra practice for us that, um, that we can practice solving these proportions where you're cross multiplying. And you're distributing, so I would get to x plus 30 equals 8x plus 40. Subtract the 8x over here, I get 2x. Subtract the 30 over there, I get 10. And I think I get x equals 5. With x equals 5, x equals 5. Well, no, it's the new format. 